the manosphere. What the manosphere? The manosphere. We are in the middle of what many would consider a crisis of lonely single men. The Fresh and Fit podcast, influencing a new generation of kids, a one embarrassing snippet at a time. Whether women want to accept it or not, they know deep down that their value is 1,000% derived from the way they look. Have you ever thought about replacing one of us in the Try Guys? Yes. He's telling the truth. Do you secretly think that Ned and his wife are going to get divorced someday? No. He's lying. I, I could have told you that. And I think it's decisions like this that promotes the existence of the manosphere. Women are the physical manifestations of this phenomenon. They can't be trusted to handle anything of greater responsibility, anything of greater importance than daily household chores. I'm constantly besieged by things randomly being moved to other places that are quote unquote more organized. When is Ned going to say how great I am at cleaning? and how thankful he is that I do all the work around the house. I was so disappointed. If I take you out and you don't do shit besides just exist, I'm going to get you as quickly as possible and kick you to the fucking curb. I'm not cleaning your apartment. A straw man argument, sometimes called a straw person argument or spelled straw man argument, is the logical fallacy of distorting an opposing position into an extreme version of itself and then arguing against that extreme version. In creating a straw man argument, the arguer strips the opposing point of view of any nuance and often misrepresents it in a negative light. This is the foundation for everything we are going to see today. But first, oh hi there, hello, hello, hi, it's my face again, swoop, 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 Ah, so, welcome to part two of me dismantling the absurd ramblings of the toxic manosphere, starring people like Ned Fulmer, which there is a shocking correlation between Ned and these troglodyte asshats, Andrew Tate, Fresh and Fit, this guy, and whoever the hell that is. When we get into the Ned Fulmer segment today, like, it's gonna open your mind to a whole nother level of manipulative f that I didn't even see at first, okay? And y'all know I am a researching learned bitch, okay? <laughs> when you make swoop pause in wonderment and I'm just like, eh. oh, oh. <laughs> if that happens, that means you done fucked up, okay? <laughs> Everything must happen instantly, quickly, fast, speed, attack. We also dig deeper into the root psychology and sometimes we take it to Petty University because these yo-yos really just be trying to make my face want to melt off, okay? And I like my face where it is, thank you. Boop. Oh, hey y'all, it's future me just sliding in here real quick to announce that the brand new Petty University Apparel Fall, Winter, and Holiday Gift Collection will be dropping this Thursday, November 17th in just a couple of days. I might be wearing one of the pieces right now that I'm covering up right now. I don't know, I'm just saying. <laughs> brand new designs, we have bottoms, matching sets, and a jacket. So the new collection will be released in my next upload right here, November 17th at 11 a.m. and on the swoop shop linked below. All right, okay, back to the back to the other me now. Okay, I'll see you later. Now, for those of you who are familiar with my content, we are doing things a little different today. Y'all know that my docs are generally long, in-depth deep dives with tons of video clips and heavy production. I am working on a full-length Andrew Tate doc, and as part of what I do, I have to research a lot of content. So I thought I'd do some of that research in real time with all of you so we can marvel together at the inane stupidity. So we're gonna dive straight into some of the dumbest shit I've heard on the internet. But real quick, I wanna give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Lumi, who, wow, has this just changed everything for me. So I don't know about you, but in my humble opinion, body odor sucks. <laughs> Your girl be out here showering often two times a day and just like shellacking my armpits with like a thick layer of antiperspirant deodorant, okay? I'm talking base coat, primer, and a top coat. So enter Lumi Deodorant. So Lumi Deodorant is a doctor developed whole body aluminum free deodorant for your pits, privates, and everything else that is clinically proven to block body odor for up to 72 hours, even on sensitive skin. 72 hours, do you know how long that 72, that, that's three days people, three 
whole days of not stanking up the room. So Lumi prevents external body odor from happening in the first place by stopping the odor causing reaction from happening on our skin. Lumi obliterates all body odor, like, like for real, like you can safely put it anywhere. Now Lumi's starter pack bundle is a great deal for new customers with incredible savings. It comes with a full size stick deodorant, a cream deodorant tube, which I think is amazing. Like you could just squeeze up just a little bit of product and then just like swipe it on your finger. And you also get two free products and free US shipping. I've been using Lumi for several months now and I legit will never go back. Oh, it is the most delicious smell ever and I apply it in all those little nooks and crannies, okay? Ain't no shame in the odor-free game, my friends. And just for all of you, Lumi is giving you a total discount of almost 40% off when you order at lumi.deals slash swoop and enter code swoop at checkout because it's time to live the odor-free life you deserve, honey. Okay, back to the doc. On Labor Day weekend, multiple fans alerted us that they had seen Ned uh, and an employee engaging in public romantic behavior. Say hi, pork chop. Say hi. Hi, uh, I am editing the video that you're watching right now. This is me editing me talking. I just wanted to jump in real quick because I realized that I never filmed a segment where I was introducing you to who Fresh and Fit are. I'm gonna play a little segment right here, just a little summary of who they are so that you have an idea. And then we're gonna jump into Ned Fulmer in a couple of minutes, but first Fresh and Fit, and then it'll all make sense. Okay, back to the video. The main subjects we're going to look at are the delightfully dynamic duo called Fresh and Fit. What's up guys, Myron Gaines. Fresh Paint CEO. Today, we're gonna talk about why you need to stop being a simp. I know, I know what you're thinking. The name, I get it, okay. Like, but but listen folks, Slim and Thick can name themselves whatever they want. <laughs> Wait, I just called them Slim and Thick. I didn't even, Slim and Thick, Slim and Thick. Fre fresh and fit. I'm gonna mess that up all the time. <laughs> Again, you're forgettable. That's why I didn't wanna do you guys' podcast. Forgettable, hate the setup. Uh, the name is underwhelming. Okay, I'm not gonna get into like an extensive background on these particular individuals that make up Fresh and Fit, but essentially they have a, like, a, a a website and a, a, a training course and a podcast consult lonely men who are trying to talk to women. I kid you die, he goes by Fresh Prince CEO, which I just, you couldn't even come up with an original name, dude, okay? We got the Fresh Prince of Bel Air and I guess we got the Fresh Prince of Nowhere, okay? And this guy who is the fit of Fresh and Fit, his name is Myron. Chivalry is dead and women killed it. You guys are no longer gonna go into this gender war with a fucking butter knife. With us? We're gonna arm you guys with bazooka so that you guys can play fair with the women that are in there with rocket launchers as well. Yep. I, I don't believe in talking in broad generalities. These dudes almost only talk that way, meaning they'll say men do this and women do this. Men and women, we're very different. We have opposing goals. Like girls are trying to, you know, get resources, time, attention out of guys. Guys are trying to get You're gonna hear a lot of that today. The guys that pay these girls time, money, attention, resources, etc., are hoping for some type of romance and don't get it because the girl will laugh at them and continue to siphon off as much resources, time, and attention as she can. And when women lose sexual leverage, guess what? They have no power, because that's their only fucking power. So, do with that what you will. <laughs> All right, now let's dig into the abyss. Okay, I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this, but here's the reality, guys. If you got a girl and you're dating her seriously, she's your main chick, and she has all an Instagram, as well as maybe sexy photos of herself on the internet, that is cheating. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Arm and Hammer over here. You're so insecure, bro, that now you are making it that if she even has an Instagram account, that that's cheating. You're that insecure, my dude. And like, what is Instagram? Instagram is just a social media account. So if you really wanna get to the root of this, that is a man trying to control a woman's social network, trying to control how she communicates with her support system, with her friends, with her family. It's an isolation tactic. This is uh, a prime example of a tactic that uh, men who are abusive in relationships, or not just men, that people People who are abusive in relationships is when they try to isolate you from your friends and your family and your support system, your means of communicating with the outside world, right? It's literally just a manipulation tactic trying to exert power and control because more than likely it's all rooted in fear. They are afraid that they cannot control something or someone in their life because they're flailing. This is the sign of someone who is flailing. Look at this face. This is a face of someone who is flailing. Don't let people think and tell you, oh, you're, you're just insecure, blah, blah, blah. No, 
here's the reality. As a man that's higher status, you have the leverage. The thing is that's really funny to me, he's talking to the people who are like supposedly paying to them or tuning in trying to figure out how to get women, right? Everything is about how to get a woman. Therefore, your business is dependent on women. So I guess, again, women have all the power in this equation because you rely on women in order to have a business. Y'all gotta know, this is the world that we live in and times have f***ing changed. You can't be a traditional man in a world where women are no longer traditionally women. You gotta play by their rules. You gotta treat them as expendable commodities just like they treat us like expendable commodities. As society is growing and developing and changing and kind of equaling out, incels and dudes like this realize that they are getting left behind and so they lash out. And then they try to teach other men that they're a higher status, but the higher status is is still in pursuit of getting the attention and the adoration and the respect of a woman. Therefore, if she wants to have a relationship with you, she's gotta go by your terms, not society's BS. Oh, this is a socially accepted all around. Oh, this is socially acceptable. Uh, honestly, the only people who talk like that are 12 year olds. Last time I checked, you go back 100 years ago, Girls didn't show pictures of themselves on the internet with, with their ass out. Last time I checked, if you go back a hundred years ago, the internet didn't exist. However, they do today, but they still expect you to be a gentleman and chivalrous while they can absolve themselves of being traditionally feminine. That doesn't even make any sense. Don't be stupid. Hold her to a standard, and if she wants a relationship with you, you're gonna have it on your terms, which means she isn't gonna do that cheating BS that Western society tells women they can do. Protect her from herself. Here's the reality. If you think this way, we don't want you. So men, protect yourself from this kind of stupidity. Your whole basis of your podcast, you guys are like reframing misogynistic ideals for modern men to consume and be oh. okay with. <laughs> so. So I've seen several clips where Fab Fit Funyun over here get triggered. Wow, you are triggered, man. Wow. Whenever someone says the word misogyny or misogynist. Your whole basis of your podcast, you guys are like reframing misogynistic ideals to be oh. okay with. <laughs> Can you tell us what was misogynistic? Just one thing. Because yeah, that's a pretty serious claim. It is. That's a pretty, that's a pretty, uh, what, does, what does misogyny mean? What does misogyny mean? Triggered! <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Like, they, they just, they love to call a woman triggered if she has a strong opinion that doesn't align with theirs. Like, even though half the time these dudes or, like, their male guests be screaming to the point of unlistenable mic distortion in their podcast. Exactly! 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 <laughs> but sure, it's just the ladies who are triggered. Yeah, so mac and cheese over here get real triggered if you use that word around them and then typically quote some like textbook definition of misogynist. What is the hatred and or contempt of women? Followed by a straw man argument. Thank Where do we say we hate women? So since they seem to evidently like to quote the scholars, here are some textbook definitions of the word as provided by linguistics experts. Misogynist, a person who dislikes, despises, or is strongly prejudiced prejudiced against women. Or how about this one from the Merriam-Webster dictionary? Rumor has it they know a thing or two about the meaning of words. <laughs> a person who hates or discriminates against women. A misogynistic person. Now my favorite part of this official definition is that they then follow up with this exact quote attached to the definition. These comments are attempting to cut much deeper, striking women at what misogynists see as their most valuable characteristics appearance, sexual purity, sweetness, and submissiveness. Sound familiar? I mean, you know, Brotato Chip over here focuses on woman's value is only found in her S purity. I have to abbreviate these words. So sweetness and being submissive. It's all about being submissive. The woman must be a subordinate or subversive, submissive. All of those words. Thing is, is that men don't really ask for much from women. We really don't. We're very simple. Mm -hmm. we want you to be compliant not give us a headache. So I don't know, it's kind of funny how the things that they just go on and on and on about constantly and then teach to other people to try to make a profit from are all about these things that are actually in the Merriam-Webster definition of misogynist. Is that a coincidence? I don't know. Can you tell us what was misogynistic? Just one thing. Because that's a pretty serious claim. It is. Let's look at a little bit more to get some better context for the misogynist in your life who's too dense to realize or admit it. 
allegedly. <laughs> so here's a little bit more. Misogyny also operates through S harassment, coercion, and psychological techniques aimed at controlling women. In some cases, misogyny rewards women for accepting an inferior status. It's funny they talk about coercion. If we look at those leaked DMs uh, of that girl who was alleging that Fitastic over here was saying in order for her to be on the podcast, she either has to sleep with him, that's coercion, and it just happens to be in these definitions of misogyny, so I mean, you do the math. Though so most common in men, misogyny also exists in and is practiced by women against other women or even themselves. Misogyny functions as an ideology or belief system that has accompanied patriarchal or male-dominated societies for thousands of years and continues to place women in subordinate positions with limited access to power and decision-making. Limited access to power and decision-making. Who was it again who's been teaching all all of that. Therefore, if she wants to have a relationship with you, she's got to go by your terms. Oh yeah, Johnson and Johnson over here. I mean, she can't have an Instagram, so there's limited access to, you know, power, education, decision making, social life, friends, family. Philosopher Kate Maine of Cornell University. I know they'll probably have a problem with me citing a woman, but you know, a professor at Cornell University seems pretty smart. Defines misogyny as the attempt to control and punish women who challenge male dominance. And finally, S ideology will tend to discriminate between men and women, typically by alleging S differences beyond what is known or could be known, and sometimes counter to our best current scientific evidence. Misogyny will typically differentiate between between good women and bad ones and punishes the latter. Oh, gee, who was it who said something about punishing women? Ah yes, steak and potatoes. Chivalry is dead and women killed it. You guys are no longer gonna go into this gender war with a fucking butter knife. With us, we're gonna arm you guys with bazooka so that you guys could play fair with the women that are in there with rocket launchers as well. Now, aside from the obvious evidence suggesting that you know, Rogers and Hammerstein over here <laughs> I just, I'm sorry, Rod. I just call them Rogers and Hammerstein. I'm sorry, Rogers. That's not fair, okay? Hammerstein, you cool. We good. <laughs> but aside from the indication that these dudes do in fact exhibit textbook Oxford and Merriam-Webster defined misogyny. The stupidest part of this is that this mentality shared by Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince of Nowhere has stripped away any and all traces of humanity in their own lives and the lives of the men they're teaching. They removed the human element, which is integral to all human beings, again, unless you have a rare combination of mental illnesses and disorders that stop you from feeling like Jeffrey Dahmer which is exceedingly rare and we know what happened to him, but they've cut off the human side of all of this, like stripped it down into some arbitrary black and white way of thinking that doesn't reflect reality. It's devoid of emotion, which ultimately, most likely, leads to nothing but being miserable where their lives revolve around women. And they hate that. Facts. <laughs> hmm. I don't give a f what anybody says. If a girl, is your girlfriend. She is your main woman. And she's advertising her body on the internet for other men to look at. That is fucking cheating. I don't know why he's so triggered. I don't know why he's so emotional. My wife, 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 my wife. So as promised, let's take a moment and talk once more about Ned Fulmer. You know, try guy, wife guy, you know the guy. Now, if you haven't seen, I did a two-part series on Ned Fulmer and the Try Guys situation. We deep dive into not just what happened, but some of the psychology and like the greater impact and the mindset around cheating as a whole, you know, usual swoop doc sidebars. And so as I was researching my upcoming doc on toxic masculinity, like alpha male influencers and Andrew Tate, <laughs> that's a fun one, this whole Ned Fulmer wife guy try guy situation went down right after I posted my first doc on fresh and easy and while researching Ned I, I couldn't help but see like a through line that connected the two entities like Ned and like mac and cheese and like this whole theme that we have basically men making a business by taking advantage of women but from two totally different angles right but the thing is they're both still reliant on women and using women now fresh and easy's entire business model is to help 
help men by hating women, as demonstrated in part one on them, and as we continue to tackle their misogyny here. The whole basis of your podcast, you guys are like reframing misogynistic ideals to be oh. okay with. <laughs> what, does, what, does what does misogyny mean? What does misogyny mean? Now, in doing the two-part series on Ned, we see that Ned's business is also in a way uh, to exploit a woman, this being his wife, for his financial gain and to boost his public profile. Now, I believe that Ned discovered early on that he was more likable when he appeared to be the doting husband. So much so that he literally made it his entire public personality. And what we know is that this image, the wife guy thing, particularly appeals to and often praises on young single people, particularly single girls and women, and lonely women, and their romanticizing of these couples that they watch online, who they view as like hashtag goals, because they get a glimpse into this seemingly perfect relationship that they hope to have one day. It's kind of like these single people are sold a shiny bag of lies, and because they're vulnerable to want to believe this ideal exists, they buy into it, you know? And it's, it's quite understandable why someone would you know it, 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 it's sexy like the whole get you a man who loves you without makeup on or like get you a man who looks hot and also adores you or like get you a man who brings you flowers every week and worships the ground you walk on right like people vulnerable to this Hollywood built idea that perfect couples even exist which is a bunch of bullshit they don't often buy into this content with their views and their time and yes their actual money when they're buying, you know, like Ned and Ariel's cookbook or paying for a meet and greet photo op. So when I took a step back in analyzing the wife guy, as well as the super misogynistic triggered snowflake Tweedledee and Tweedle Dumbledore over here, the dichotomy of these two seemingly opposite personas actually play off of each other more than it may appear on the surface. And I am always fascinated in analyzing things that seem very different, polar opposites, when you find out that, oh wait, shit, they're actually quite related. Now these people are all influencing young people, you know, scoop and poop over here here, primarily influencing incel boys, feeding them bullshit bitter red pills filled with calcified hate towards women because they believe women just want your time, attention, and resources. The girls are trying to, you know, get resources, time, attention, and <laughs> women are trying to get resources, time, attention, whatever it is that they're looking for. <laughs> but girls are easily able to obtain money, time, resource, attention, whatever it is. You know, like gold, frankincense, and myrrh, right? That's stuff. <laughs> and they propel the feeble notion that men are owed S from women just, like, I don't know why, because they, they got like a, I don't know, a dangly piece of meat swinging around down there that just has to land in a sandwich or they'll just die. <laughs> like, fuck if I know, okay? <laughs> and so Beavis and Butthead bottle up their snake oil programs, allegedly, teaching you to uh, attempt to use women for S and then also make women feel shitty in the process. Like, yay, anything to please the snowflake misogynist in the room. <laughs> Goody. You're not special, you're like other girls. That's the I'm key. not special. Like, so, you're like other women that are So like, what makes you special then? And so you've got that over here. And on the other side of the spectrum is the wife guy side. You have Cheaty McCheat Pants, also known as Ned. <laughs> Flanders, as I like to call him. Idly ho, neighborinos. You have young girls looking up to Ned as the opposite of bacon and eggs, where he seemingly made his wife feel special, love, and declared that he was safe and trustworthy while turning around and capitalizing on their marriage, making potentially millions of dollars while single girls swoon, hoping for their own Prince Ned someday, never thinking for a moment that someone like that could or would cheat in such an arrogant, almost flaunting, sort of way. I think that's what made it just really like, wow, just like, wow. <laughs> and so again, like what's, you know, what's the through line here? What's the thread that ties these two seemingly polar opposite types of men together? It's their careers, their fame, their public profile. Like it all hinges and all depends on women. In a lot of ways, instead of making their own names for themselves by their work or their personalities, the majority of their persona centers around 
around some form of exploitation of women. And I know Tom and Jerry would just hate to hear that, but I'm sorry, brohams. You need women to be famous. That's just, that's the way it is, okay? So you're welcome. <laughs> oh wait, I think famous is like actually a really generous word to be using towards them, but whatever, okay, allegedly. <laughs> so again, on the one hand, you have the outwardly toxic steak and potatoes, and on the other, you have the covertly toxic try guy, wife guy, cheater guy. And that's not to say that all wife guys are toxic. I certainly hope that they're not. You know, I'd like to think that some wife guys just genuinely want to lift up their their wives and that's purely all it is. But Ned made his entire persona, his entire brand about being the wife guy. It's literally like there's like a little bobblehead doll. My wife. And it made him famous, at least, you know, well, famous to like some people, okay? He's, you know, like, I don't know what list. Maybe he's like a D-list. I don't know how that works. It, it appears to me that his ego just became so large that he just blatantly had an affair out in the public for months. And Tom and Jerry also have made their entire persona, an entire brand about bashing women. Like these men need women to feel like they have a place in the world and to make a buck, right? I'm not saying all men are like this at all. I happen to love me some men, okay, I do. <laughs> but with examples like this, it plays into what we've seen in society since the dawn of time, right? The the need to exploit women in some way for the benefit of some dudes. <laughs> you know, like there, there there's a reason the phrase sex sells has been around since like well, fucking forever, right? It's like, ah, look, I just sold something. Ah, isn't it amazing? I just sold something again. Ooh. Yep, sold that too. <laughs> Sorry, it's just, it's too much. Susie, you know what I'm saying, Susie. Okay, Carol, Carol. Okay, yeah, I, I know, right, Steven? Roberto, what do you think? So to some degree, I think there's the possibility that this idea of alpha male applies to both scenarios here, right? Like, you know, the part of any alpha personality that has the potential to be harmful, like, you know, Jacoby and Myers over here overtly insulting and gaslighting women and Flanders who literally flaunted his affair, like, well, everywhere, thinking no one would catch him or say anything because he's Ned guy, famous guy, that guy, you know? My wife. My wife, 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 my wife. All of this is business. Like all of this fame and fortune for both Ned Flanders and Fast and Furious stems from the fact that they are a hundred percent dependent on women at the expense of women. Okay, hundred percent. We'll say like ninety-five percent relying on women. We'll give them five percent. Okay, way to go, guys. <laughs> now, but you know, take away women and they don't really have a pot to piss in. Which you know is like really sad if you think about it. Like you ain't got nowhere to piss in if it ain't on women. What's that floppy meat to do? Just like blowing in the breeze like that with no purpose. Hmm. Too bad. So sad. Now, if y'all remember in the last doc, uh, the Try Guys Ned Flanders part two, where I dug into the longstanding history of the wife guy. Uh, we started with the original OG wife guy, Robbie Tripp. I mean, who could forget that dude, right? You know, I use my Instagram as a place to write about the things that inspire me and the things that I'm passionate about. And, and no one does that more than this beautiful girl right here, so. Yeah, it's all fun and games, Mr. Tripp, until you declare yourself a rapper, okay? I don't know what it is about all these people. Like once they get a little tiny sliver of attention or fame suddenly think that they're rappers. Like I just, I've been a musician for longer than I've been doing these docs and like that shit is just funny to me. It's like the most like, there's some weird like D-list celebrity to rapper pipeline that usually always suck, but you know, whatever, I'm getting off topic now. But when I was looking back at, you know, OG wife guy, like there was something obvious that was happening in these music videos, right? The S exploitation of women. Again, another wife guy who built some insta fame by centering his entire content around his wife, then getting a huge eco stroke, co-opting the rap game, and suddenly everything centers around the monumentally cliche exploits of women in teeny tiny outfits twerking for the camera, hypersexualizing women as if that's our sole worth. Now, of course, like don't get me wrong, like I'm I'm guessing, like I'm I'm hoping that these women consented and got paid for their work. Ain't nothing wrong with that at all. 
all do what you do, but it is an instance of a man capitalizing on the stereotypes that women are ultimately worth little more than our bodies. You know how mac and cheese want us to believe and that it's being used for these dudes to make careers and profits. It kind of makes you think, right? And if we go back to Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince of Nowhere over here, like I just, what, what would Beans and Frank's podcast be without women? <laughs> Cause remember their slogan is females, fitness and finances. And the thing is there are better fitness creators who actually know their shit and far superior financial advisors out there available for free in podcasts and YouTube, TikTok, all that kind of stuff. So like who would take financial advice from Frank and Beans over here? I just, that blows my mind. Like they literally have to center the vast majority of their content on women bashing and then they'll like occasionally slip in a little finance moment here and there to make it seem like they're not obsessed with women when in fact, when you have a community of self proclaimed incels, you are in fact obsessed with women, allegedly. <laughs> and look at Ned now, like he proved he was not the trustworthy doting husband and the public is collectively done with him. Like, I, I don't know if he'll like have any type of public career after this because his entire everything now appears like it was built on a lie or at the very least capitalizing on something that wound up pretty fucking disingenuous. I'm the one that always talks about his wife. Which, which brings me to my next point. Actually, hold up. Class in session, roll the intro. When someone makes one single thing their entire personality and it's not even a personality trait. That's a red flag, y'all. Like a red flag the size of, you know, like those American flags at the car dealerships that somehow are bigger than a two-story house. Well, Ned's been waving this red flag for a long ass time now. And Arm and Hammer over here been letting their flag fly since day one. That is hard to say. Flag, letting their flag fly, flag fly. I don't know. All, and, it, and it makes sense, right? I believe that all three of these dudes are overcompensating for their own insecurities that they feel inadequate and potentially lack the talent to make a name for themselves without exploiting an entire gender or an entire gender identity to do it. Like with them, you're dependent on the thing that you despise. So have fun with that. <laughs> Okay, we are gonna continue the mayhem. I hope you're enjoying the ride, but real quick, a big thank you to our second sponsor and to you, all of you watching and supporting the work I do by tuning in uh, for making this possible in the first place. I have absolutely just nothing here without all of you and I deeply appreciate your time in being here with me. So Fetch is a super easy to use free app where you earn free rewards on literally anything you buy. Honey, this ain't a game. I have been using Fetch for almost a year now. Y'all have heard me talk about it before. It is a free app that gives you free rewards like Amazon gift cards, Ulta, Target, even Petty University. Okay, it's amazing. And point redemption starts at 5,000 points. You just take any receipt you have, like I just bought some groceries, and you tap to scan and take a photo of your receipt. And then it instantly gives you points for your receipt. Even with receipts that are like two weeks old, okay? You then redeem those points for hundreds of rewards, including Amazon and Visa gift cards. And then same goes with e-receipts. Like if you shop something from Amazon or Petty University, you just tap to submit your digital receipts that are emailed to you and you'll get free instant points. They also have a section where if you purchase these specific items like this cereal or these vitamins, you'll instantly get like 3,500 points. And even better, if you use my link to download, you'll automatically get 5,000 bonus points just for downloading downloading the free app. Like to me, this is totally a no brainer. Like I'm buying this stuff anyways. It only takes a few seconds. And with just a couple of receipts, I'm getting free gift cards. So check out my link in the description to download Fetch for free and use code SWOOP to get an instant 5,000 points when you scan your first receipt. You are absolutely going to love this app, I promise. Okay, back to the doc. Whether women want to accept it or not, they know deep down their value is 1,000% derived from the way they look. I'm gonna say that one more time for you guys, all right? Okay, okay, okay. Let's take a look at a round table discussion. Now, now the first thing that I want to point out here, part of the, the, the podcast format is they often will have a whole bunch of young girls uh, in there with them and they might have like one featured male guest in there. And then you've got steak and potatoes over here. So they have intentionally, they won't tell you this, but they have intentionally stacked the deck against these young girls, primarily in regards to 
the what is called the power dynamic. Power dynamics come in many different forms, right? Whether someone is older, whether someone is uh, makes more money, whether they have more life experience. So in these instances, you know, we got Bonnie and Clyde over here, and what I don't know, he's what like 40s in his 40s, maybe both. Uh, maybe he's like late 30s, 40s, something like that. And you have all of these young girls. I've watched several of their podcasts. Normally, they're like ages 19 to like 22, 25 sometimes, but they're significantly younger than all of the men. So what they have done already is stacked the power dynamic by choosing only really, really young girls. We also have the fact that they are the two hosts. Therefore, they're going to have these girls inherently are going to look at them as like more powerful in that setting because it is their show. Uh, there is a stronger likelihood that most of these girls, I think a lot of them, they ask like, what do you do? And they're like, oh, I'm getting into modeling or something, right? So the, a lot of these girls don't have an established career yet and they are financially not making much money as Johnson and Johnson over here. So there is another power dynamic. So what they have done, and this is a very intentional thing, is they are intentionally stacking more of the perceived power in their corner and intentionally picking young girls who have far less life experience simply because of the fact that they're not nearly as old as these guys and therefore they don't have like careers, longevity, and they're not going to have the same financial. And so that is something that we need to always be thinking about. And they also aren't picking women like me <laughs> to be on this type of podcast. They're not going to pick somebody who is, you know, has a history of being seen as like very outspoken on stuff like this. They don't want that. They are trying to stack the deck in their favor. Short term bang, the attractive guy and long term marry the rich guy. But what do you bring to the table? That's a very good one. Very good uh, one. We want to go, we want to go around the table with that one. So mm -hmm. what do you make of the table? Outside of definitely supportive. I'm definitely ambitious and, and I like to be a part of your idea. And overall, like I have really good intentions. I want to see you grow um, because if you grow, I grow. Obviously good sex, um, great communication, and I'm definitely adventurous. So I'm super down. I'm open-minded. I'm down. So I'm fun. Okay, but we mentioned those My man, she just gave you a whole soliloquy, a whole list of the top 10 things that she said she brings to the table there. And the only thing that he has to say in response is, we said no S. You already see, you already see this dynamic here, right? Like he's just looking for some way to disregard everything that came out of her mouth and just focus on that one little thing because she mentioned S. Well, we said no S. I'm like, my man, then like knock that word out. Did you forget all of the 20 other adjectives that she used, but whatever. I'm all about my man. I support him. I encourage him. I motivate him. I push him. I'm there for him. I love him. I'm all about him as long as he's all about me. Does that include if he wants to have other girls though? Absolutely oh. not. You already know that. <laughs> <laughs> then, then in that case, she does not support you by a gentleman. Stop it. Again, these guys are so one dimensional in their thinking about relationships. That's probably why they do not have successful ones or they have not currently had any. They base everything off of getting S, right? It's a very one dimensional way of thinking that will not lead to ultimate life fulfillment and happiness. We know this. This has been like shown in a million studies. And again, the question here was everything but S and he just made it about S. But definitely a best friend, somebody that you can rely on, that you can talk to, that you can play with, that you can just feel like yourself with no armory. Oh, oh, she, I feel like she about to school them on something. You can just relax and be yourself without the stress that goes on in the world. So no judgment. Does he like, there's a, does there's he a type talk of about unconditional us? love. Wait, you said unconditional love? There's a type of unconditional love because when it comes to friendship, when you have a friendship with someone, you love them for who they are. Do you see him perk up over here when she said unconditional love? You're telling me that your relationship is unconditional love? As of now, yeah, I would say so. Okay. <laughs> All right, excellent, all right. <laughs> so then he pushes his little sound effect button and he's laughing at her, right? And ooh, she giving him the daggers. Number one, that is the look of a woman who knows her relationship and knows that he don't know shit about her relationship. Like he has been waiting for this, right? This is the face of somebody who's not listening. They don't listen. They're just waiting to speak. You know, he's like, doesn't give eye contact because it seems like he's incapable of that. He's also done some like teaching videos. He's like, don't give eye contact to a woman. It's a way to show that you are in control. <laughs> <laughs> 
I believe that that's a fallacy. All love is conditional, especially on the female that's, side, but that's, that's okay. At some point. Okay, so he starts off by saying, I believe that that's a fallacy, but then he says, it's a matter of fact, all love is conditional. So it's no longer what he believes and his own personal thing to apply to his personal life. It's now a fact. I believe that that's a fallacy. All love is conditional, especially on the that's, female side, but that's-, that's And then he says, especially on the female side. That's, that's cap. Well, that's cap. I'm so sick of people using the word cap. If, job. You, if you're saying definitely out of your experiences, then you're telling your life, definitely, because there exists unconditional love. I agree with her. <laughs> She's about to school him. He can't even look her in the eyes. Based on his other videos, he'll say, I don't give eye contact to females. Females out here don't get eye contact because that's going to make them respect me. All that looks like is you can't handle somebody speaking directly to you with an opinion that counters yours. Trying to play a little power games like this, it's either that you are just embarrassed or you think that this is a power move by not looking at her. And no one respects you for that. That's the reality. No respectable man acts like this. And they will tell you, I don't act like that. Like they'd be like, I will look you straight in the eye. If you said something I don't agree with and we are having a debate, I'm going to look you straight in the eye because I can, because I'm not afraid to, because I don't back down. This is someone who is constantly has to back down. Now, remember what I said earlier about the straw man argument and how it applies to a lot of what we've heard from these fine folks. So let's recap and then expand on the definition a bit. So once again, a straw man argument is the logical fallacy of distorting an opposing position into an extreme version of itself and then arguing against the extreme version. In creating a straw man argument, the arguer strips the opposing point of view of any nuance and often misrepresents it in a negative light. So let's read on because this is fun. <laughs> the straw man fallacy is an informal fallacy, which means that the flaw lies with the arguer's method of arguing rather than the flaws of the argument itself. The straw man fallacy avoids the opponent's actual argument and instead argues against an inaccurate character of it. By doing this, the straw man fallacy is a fallacy of relevance because with it, the arguer doesn't engage with the relevant components of the their opposer's position. So what we're seeing a lot of in these clips to which I haven't seen anyone else bring up to them is their constant unyielding usage of the straw man arguments. Now, they don't necessarily do it all the time. No one does anything all the time. Just like whenever women speak. <laughs> no, but for real, like the vast majority of the time, if a woman or a man for that matter has a different opinion than theirs, they take that opinion, extract one or two points in that person's argument, distort it, push it to an extreme, and then argue against that extreme. And what winds up happening is they argue points that the woman or person with an opposing view didn't even make. They made it so extreme, it's not even what they said. But they do this so constantly, so rapid fire, and honestly, oftentimes so forcefully. I mean, we've seen countless clips of these dudes literally screaming, that it tricks the unassuming listener into thinking that they're making valid points and crushing the opponent, when in fact, it's mostly all a diversion. They, they never argued the actual point, they just conflated it into something that it wasn't. And then steak and potatoes over here double down on it by shouting facts <laughs> as if they're stating actual factual facts they're not facts they're fallacies you no know, 10 years from now you married somebody you have three kids it stops working it stops basically being involved with you yeah. and you would still love this man if he kept that up i would still love them but i would definitely have to love myself more in order to leave and let them figure out their life Ooh! She, she is coming with knowledge that they were not prepared for her to have. That's why he can't look at her. He can't look at her. Look at all of these girls, all these women here. All of them are looking at her. All of them are capable of making eye contact. But these guys who think women are, you know, less than because they need to think that because it's the only way at this point that they can try to exert some type of power and control. They feel like, 
oh, actually these, this woman right here is intellectually dominating me right now, so you can't look her in the eye. I mean, that's all that is. People don't realize that you can't make people change. People mm. have to go through their own process. So if that person needs to go through their journey and you not being there is part of that and you do it out of look at look at how she's looking at him she's acknowledging you are a human being and you have a question and i am addressing your question and he cannot he can't he literally can't look at her and when that person is able to change and go back to you you truly love them you take them back because you know who you fell in love with you know who that person is and everybody has downs all right let me translate that womanese for you guys uh basically this guy is so obnoxious because he does not have something logical to contribute to the conversation. So what Bill and Ted have to do to make sure they're on brand with their audience of incels is to completely ignore, erase, diminish instantly any logical, intelligent thing that a woman says. His immediate thing is, let me translate this womanese. It's not womanese. She is a human being who spoke things that are very logical and are backed in quite a lot of data, statistics, and research. Ren and Stimpy should try doing a little research every now and then you might learn something. All right, let me translate that womanese for you guys. Uh, basically what she's saying is as long as you continue to be who you were when I first met you, then I will be I don't there. think she but, said that. No, I did but, not uh, say that. That mm -mm. is mansplaining. Yes. You're changing my words. Yeah, well, yeah. She, she is quick. I don't know who she is, but she is intellectually quick and you can't catch this girl on some fool shit, right? What he did is the epitome of a straw man argument. He took the essence of what she said. He immediately belittles it and diminishes it first before he even provides any type of rebuttal to it that has any intelligence behind it right so he took her words twisted them and then put it to an extreme something she never said and then he argues that thing that she never said as if it were factual and she points out i never said that and you're just taking my words and then she calls it mansplaining Let's mm. yeah all right let me translate that womanese for you guys uh basically what she's saying is as long as you continue to be who you were when i first met you then i will be i don't there. think she but, said that no, i did but, not uh, say that that is mm -mm. mansplaining Yes. And you're changing my work. And yeah. uh, basically what I am saying is that I'm just translating because you said a lot there without really saying much. But what... <laughs> seen a dude cave so hard in a debate it's actually embarrassing he can't even make eye contact he is incapable he thinks it's a power move but bro you look just weak you can't look someone in the eye who's challenging you then you are not man and up man up bro and so then because he knows he lost there him and his little hurt male pride right now we can actually see it in his body language he gets really small with inside himself everything caved in right here when people like bring their shoulders in and they kind of round forward and they look off that's because they're feeling insecure and he's feeling insecure because he got called out on trying to straw man by all of these females <laughs> you see that she is very squared off to him she's feeling confident and he crumbled look at this man just crumbled so then what he did is he resorted to what you would see like you know an eight-year-old or a nine-year-old do like a, a bully throwing a tantrum where his only response then was to try to insult her by saying well you said a lot of words but you didn't say anything and uh basically what i am saying is that I'm just translating because you said a lot there without really saying much, but what you, a lot of words came out of your mouth, but you didn't say anything. And then all of these girls immediately respond and they're like, I heard what she said. I heard a lot of things. Really? Mm, I heard a lot. I don't know about you, yeah. but yeah. like, y'all okay, okay. heard a lot of things. We all heard a lot of things. So then it's like, bro, everyone else in the room heard and understood a lot of valid points that she made. So why is it that you couldn't? Why couldn't you keep up? What I find most interesting about Sir Fast and Furious over here is that when women have a different perspective, they straw man most of the time. Especially when a woman has a response that's like really fucking smart and they don't have an intelligent rebuttal. There's two guys, right? All, all things are equal. They're both handsome, they're both tall. One is a successful teacher making 50,000. One is a successful doctor making 500,000. Which one is more attractive? Everything is equal. It's okay to say the truth. I know. I, I, it's okay <laughs> to say the truth. <laughs> 
Listen, uh, listen. The obviously. feminism in her won't allow no, 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 it. No, no, no. I, I'll answer honestly. I find that sometimes men who have a lot no, 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 come in title. No, listen, no, listen, no, listen. No, I just said equal. everything equal. was equal. Okay, then, then yeah, for sure. The man be- who has more because would be better. Because you value that more. But when men have a different perspective, they just nod their heads and say, well, that's your opinion. Yep. Uh, I mean, I truly feel that that's your if, opinion, if uh, yeah, that's your opinion. See what I'm saying? Oh. Or even worse, I- I've seen several clips where a man states something to the women in the room, and it's the polar opposite of what these dudes have been saying all along, but they're simping so hard for their guest that they suddenly agree with them and say, preach! Any bitch I ever wanted in my life, I always have. That's not appealing to me no more. You gotta bring more, your energy gotta be right. Your mind gotta be right. That body don't mean nothing after a while. It's your energy, it's your mind, what you bringing to help me grow. And that was gonna help us grow. That what counts. Yeah, preach, brother. Yeah. Preach. Yeah. This dude literally just said the opposite of everything that you say you're teaching, but because he's a dude and you're simping, you just preach. Facts. Like more often than not, if a man disagrees with Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, the man is entitled to his opinion. But when a woman disagrees with them, they start barking their straw man arguments, saying nothing to the woman's actual point and then scream facts. That, my friends, is the Oxford Dictionary textbook definition of misogyny. I'll read it again. A person who dislikes, despises, or is strongly prejudiced against women because prejudice can be an effective feeling towards a person based on their perceived group membership. The word is often used to refer to a preconceived, usually unfavorable evaluation or classification of another person based on that person's perceived political affiliation, S, gender, gender identity, beliefs, values, social class, age, blah, 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 all of the rest of this list. When you don't treat someone the same because of their gender or or social class or values based on your preconceived evaluation of their group membership, i.e. women, you're exhibiting the textbook definition of prejudice. <laughs> I mean, don't blame me, Bill and Ted. Oxford said it first, okay? And Marianne Webster be saying it, and like a bunch of doctors, and psychologists, and sociologists, and researchers, and scholars, so like, Look everyone, we finally got Pork Chop back for Ape Kitty Palette Cleanser. Say hi. Say hi, Pork Chop. Mwah. Oh, look, you look so cute in your little sweater. You know, we look like Christmas together, don't we? Oh, oh there he is. <laughs> He's like, wait, bitch, I haven't had to do this in a long time, okay? Are you paying extra? Are you paying extra for my public appearances? <laughs> Mwah. Quick announcement again, I have been working nonstop on the Petty University apparel line for the fall, winter, and holiday gift collection. Releasing Thursday, November 17th. It will release in a brand new doc as well. Couple of Twitter shout outs for my last doc, part two of the Try Guys series. If you haven't seen it, it is shocking. It is linked below. All right, everyone say see you later, Pork. Say thanks for stopping by. Bye. First shout out goes to Stubborn Bun who says, <coughs> <clears throat> swoop, 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 <laughs> swoop, swoop, swoop. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it when y'all are doing the theme song with me. It just makes me very, very happy. I hope it does make you happy too. Uh, second shout out goes to Gamer Ghoul Ghost who says, like always, swoop, mic drop, and did she say a merch set? Yes! And yes, I did, okay? Your buns are gonna be covered in the petties. I'm looking out for you, okay? I'm looking out for your buns. No, that's weird. Prepare thy buns for bottoms. Match, I don't know why. That was kind of like your your buns. Your buns are prepared, okay? They're prepared for these bottoms. Uh, there will be matching sets, stunning new colors that y'all actually voted on, and designs unlike anything that I have done before. Listen, I got, you know, you just, we go, you will be be- beautiful, okay? Beautiful in, in, the news, in the new sets. I cannot wait for y'all to see them. If you want to be my next Twitter shout out, make sure to follow me on Twitter at SpankyV, linked below, and retweet this video right here. Again, also hit me up on Instagram. I am trying to like actually do Instagram now, so I would love to connect with all of you there because I feel a little lonely, okay? 
hi, so connect with me on Instagram. It's also linked in the description. And that is where I post most often and respond to DMs and do polls. Be sure to check out lumi.deal slash swoop and use code swoop to get almost 40% off your order and enjoy smelling great and banishing body odors before the start because you deserve it, honey. Be sure to check my link in the description and download Fetch for free and use code swoop to get 5,000 reward points instantly when you scan your first receipt. You're gonna love it, honey. In my opinion, there are few things more troublesome to society than an angry, uninformed, insecure individual who's looking to lash out. We see it in physically abusive people who harm others, we see it in the cliche school bully, and when we don't address it from the start, when platforms like this exist to perpetuate these harmful stereotypes of one gender versus the other that do little more than contribute to the degradation of society and benefit no one at the end of the day, we've all got a problem. And that's the thing, people teaching misinformation like this that is specifically targeted to control and diminish women for the sake of pimp or get pimped doesn't actually benefit anyone. It sets up an unrealistic expectation on women and an unrealistic goal of achievement on men and none of it leads to actual life fulfillment, success, or happiness. In these teachings, in these scenarios, everyone loses. They come off as losers to most of society, the men who listen to them are adapting a losing mentality, the women lose, the children these people eventually might create lose in an unhealthy family dynamic, everyone loses. Instead of setting up men and women and everyone for success by embracing the healthy changes and growth our society and the world has begun to implement, you're clinging to the past, grasping at archaic principles that didn't work then and won't work now. If they had worked then, society wouldn't have evolved over time. It wouldn't have changed. Everything in nature evolves or it dies. And if you aren't willing to grow, if you aren't willing to accept the fact that times change, people change, societal standards change, then you're just going to get left behind. Get busy growing or get busy dying, the choice is yours. Class dismissed. Swoop!